Hello everyone and welcome to EDB Space Program Launch Fest Part 1. This is my attempt to quickly update YouTube viewers on the collaborative realism overhaul career mode we do on Sunday live streams on Twitch. This video will begin with launches from August 27th. Yes, it has been a while. Starting with the Herald 2F satellite launched on a Pawn E rocket, both from Tangra Aerospace by designer Miko Gagozov. The purpose of this launch was to fulfill a polar orbit satellite contract. The launch script was provided by the EDB, and this was launch 88 for the space program. For this recap, I've abandoned the previous format with the black screens for each of the launches, and hope this will lead to more efficient viewing. As you can see, we did bring the satellite into polar orbit successfully. The contract was fulfilled. It says first polar orbit satellite. It might have been the first. No, I don't think it was actually the first. I think it was actually the second, but it didn't count the first one. Anyway, uh, we had some other business to do as far as probes reaching Mars. Uh, three probes in total, two reaching orbit, and so this is one of the orbital ones. You can see it's burning for orbit. It uses that engine to bring its orbit down. For the beginning of the video, we didn't have in-game audio because the audio wasn't being recorded properly for that part of the stream, but now we've got it. And here another probe is making orbit around Mars, and yet another probe, all doing extra science as they hit different biomes and have different instruments. You can see the launches of these probes from the EDB Space Program Mars Launch Report, and so I'm not going to duplicate that here. This launch here is the 89th launch from the EDB Space Program, and it is a GoldenEye probe on a Drekker rocket, both from Surestrut Industries and running on an EDB launch script. The goal of this probe was to either fulfill a triple flyby, Moon, Venus, and Mars, or, if that's not possible, attempt to rendezvous with an asteroid. It was essentially a probe designed to maximize Delta V on this rocket. So it was carrying relatively few instruments, but unfortunately it didn't have the communication to communicate to Jupiter, otherwise that might have been an interesting launch. Uh, even more unfortunately, it turned out it didn't have the communication range to communicate with the asteroid, which it eventually got aimed at. And so this mission ended up in failure despite a successful transfer. Those were the two new missions from the August 27th livestream. We took care of other business as well, like those probes that were arriving at Mars. And so moving on to the September 3rd livestream, this is launch number 90, the Juno-1 probe on the Perun 2i rocket, both from Tangra Aerospace. A bit of an oscillation problem there. The guidance for this particular launch was provided by Nadav FR and uh, the designer of the rocket and probe was of course Mikko Gagozov. This was initially meant for an interplanetary destination, but a failure that you will eventually see led to it being aimed instead to a lunar flyby and ultimately solar orbit. But so far the probe is acting more or less correctly despite those oscillations. That was likely because SAS was still on. Here it is making orbit successfully on the expected stage so the oscillations didn't hurt Delta V too much. That stage was not meant to be relit. After that we moved on to a transfer stage which was an RD-58 and that is where the problem occurred. As you can see uh, we lost that engine midway through the transfer and that is why we had to re-aim this mission to the moon. It was basically too high to do anything else with it, and the probe itself did not have Delta V for anything else. But it still managed to uh, get some science from this. Not as much near the moon, but a little bit. Uh, moving on to uh, interplanetary space to solar orbit, we did get more. Magnetometer reading high over the sun, and other readings as well. Interestingly, we lost a solar panel upon reaching high solar orbit, but that did not hinder the situation too much, though electric charge seems to be a little bit tight right there. The second launch from September 3rd was the Olsen 1 on the Prune 2i. This is launch 91. The Olsen 1 was put together by Shearstrut Industries, Prune 2i of course from Tangra Aerospace, and the launch script from Nadav FR. 
this was our first attempt at a two-person pod. Uh, so a two-person spacecraft, not based on Gemini. Instead, it had a Mercury capsule mounted on top of an AIES lander can. It's sort of haphazard arrangement and basically pending our ability to unlock the Gemini capsule. It is completely encased in the fairing and the launch escape system is actually on the service module. There are six launch escape rockets. They double as retro rockets for the deorbit burn when used in pairs. So, good to have saw rockets do the retro burn in an emergency, just in case you have an engine problem, like we did have on the second stage of this rocket, by the way. So, the service module had to complete orbit, and that was the best way to abort, was to abort to orbit. This is, I believe, an S5.92 engine, a frigate engine, and it did manage to complete orbit for us. We got into a suitable orbit. You can see the Mercury capsule mounted on the lander can and here we are using the sod rockets to retro as planned. And we needed two pairs rather than all three. And so this was ready for service module jettison which led to some concern because on service module jettison we see an explosion and various collider issues. So that started the uh, EDB suspecting that this was not the best arrangement. However, the mission was still on, the spacecraft was descending through the atmosphere successfully, passing by Hawaii there. The heat shield is actually a lunar rated heat shield, so no concerns about it being not up to the task. And the parachute system brought us to a suitable velocity for splashdown. That was it for September 3rd. We took some time uh, putting together the controversial Olsen spacecraft. And so this was September 10th. Launch 92 was Poseidon on the Mr. Red version 3 Mark 1.5. This is from Cool Industries Rockets and with a launch script from the EDB. The goal of the Poseidon probe was to rendezvous with Ceres, to conduct a flyby mission with some science. There was no contract for this mission. It was just an attempt to fly by Ceres. And there we have second stage ignition. The Mr. Red performed fine to bring the probe to orbit. As you can see, orbit being completed there. And after the twin RL-10s completed orbit, they relit to begin the transfer burn. And that's what you see here. It is a long transfer burn, uh, costing uh, around 5,000 meters per second to get to Ceres in its current location in its orbit. After the RL-10s completed their work, it was up to the probe's own engine to continue the burn and finish the burn. Unfortunately, uh, there was a problem with the RCS being misconfigured, and so the mission ended unsuccessfully in that case. The next mission was our first attempt at a station launch. This was from Verlin Space Aeronautics Corp. And it was meant to be Yuri Gagarin Memorial Station designed by Ash19256 with a uh, launch script by Nadav FR. But as you can see, there were obvious problems with uh, keeping the payload in the fairing. And perhaps we also uh, we're controlling from the wrong controller. If we were controlling from a controller on the payload, that would likely explain to a great degree the oscillations in the rocket. Though, yeah, this was this was not going to work out quite well one way or another. And so, ultimately, uh, well, since launch is relatively short, I'll just show you the entire thing. And this was launch 93. And at a certain point, uh, this is going to be up to range safety. And attempts were made to uh, communicate with a command module on the payload to try and activate range safety. And... Oh! We had staging before that could happen. As it turned out, this was overly optimistic in terms of structural integrity. 
I suspect that part of the problem is a mismatch in Kerbal Joint Reinforcement versions between contractors and the EDB. I'm not entirely sure though, but that needs to be checked out because uh, clearly uh, there is there is a issue here. But in any case, uh, moving right along, we launched a Hercules Space Tug on Aphrodite rocket as our 94th launch, the Hercules Space Tug from Shearstrut Industries, the Aphrodite rocket from Cool Industries rockets, and the launch script was provided by the EDB. This was simply a payload that was hanging out in inventory, and we decided to launch it for emergency purposes to make sure that if something should need help getting to its proper location, we had a space tug in orbit. Fortunately, boil off does not occur when you're not focused on a particular mission, so we were taking advantage of that. The Hercules space tug was originally designed to bring lunar crewed missions to the moon in our attempts to land on the moon, but this one was just left in inventory as a spare. Uh, in fact, there is more than one spare. We will launch another one uh, later on. But uh, this was in support of potential crewed missions in the future. And so there it is, making orbit. And on to the final launch from September 10th. Uh, another test of the Olsen 1 spacecraft, this time on the Ariadne rocket. Uh, both this time from Shearstrut Industries. And this time... The Olsen is crewed with Nancy Kerman. The launch script was provided by the EDB. The Ariadne is uh, superficially based on the Ariane rocket, but the center engine engines are not hydrogen and oxygen burning. A little bit late on separating the boosters. It is entirely kerosene and oxygen based. Once the boosters separate, Quite a long delay there, but alright, everything is still safe. And here we are at the end of the first stage. And still an uh, interesting delay. Ah, fairing separation first. You can see the Olsen spacecraft again. And awaiting separation of the second stage. Okay, there is second stage is gone, and engines are lit. These, I believe, uh, are a cluster of, uh, of hypergolic engines, but there we have a staging error. Um, this recently, uh, I think last year, occurred to a Progress spacecraft where, where it separated from the upper stage early. Um, of course, for a crewed mission that is extra unfortunate, we had to abort, and Nancy Kerman experienced high g-forces on the way back down. You can see a very steep re-entry, but she was ultimately safe, parachutes opened, and the EDB completely reconsidered the Olsen system, and it will never be used again. So that is the end of that, and on to September 17th with launch 96. This was the Mercury probe on the Janus rocket from Satellites R Us. So Satellite 999 designed both the probe and the rocket, and also modified a launch script by Nadav FR. And so initially things seemed to be working well, but you see a uh, oscillation now. You, yeah, unfortunately it's at night, so it's a little bit difficult to spot. Well, okay, it's not difficult to spot now, is it? Uh, things have definitely gone awry. And again, uh, Partly, I think it might be based on where we control the rocket, and our possibility is a mismatch in Kerbal Joint Reinforcement versions. So the EDB will have to talk that over with its contractors, but uh, it only became particularly apparent from watching these recaps. Uh, here is the next launch. This is a Poseidon probe on a Mr. Red version 3 Mark 1.5 rocket. This, again, from Cool Industries Rockets. Uh, of course, the previous time we attempted to launch this particular probe, uh, we had an RCS uh, misconfiguration. 
expecting good things this time. The rocket uh, still performed successfully through the booster stage and booster separation. And coming up on first stage out. There we go. And the second stage lit. A somewhat expensive rocket with the two RL-10s there. The mission for this was again an asteroid rendezvous attempt, but it would not be series. It was a different asteroid this time. And so there we have engines out. And of course those RL-10s will be relit for the transfer burn. And here we go again. I unfortunately didn't make note of which asteroid we were aiming at this time, but it doesn't matter because this probe did not end up making it. Uh, we will see a separation of the probe and the engine has ignited. The RCS thrusters did work, but again, uh, I think it was a communication issue that prevented that probe from reaching its target. This was again a Mercury probe on a Janus rocket. This was a reflight of that mission this time launching successfully. It was the same launch script, it was simply a different control point I believe. We just controlled the rocket on the lower core instead of on the top core and that prevented the wiggling. Interesting issue here on the upper stage, uh, the Cybertron started to uh, get a little bit hot and we will see them explode in fact. And even more curious, once they've exploded, you can see the engine on this upper stage pulsating as if it was an Orion nuclear engine, you know, the one which tosses nuclear bombs out and has a pusher plate. Uh, this is not that kind of engine. And it, it seems to be attempting to overheat the bottom of that tank, but thankfully we got through that stage without it blowing up. But curious issue there. And the upper stage had to complete orbit. I think the engine that had that pulsating problem was an NK9V, and I'm not too sure whether it lost some delta V and whether it was supposed to be the one to complete orbit. But in any case, this engine, either an LR105 or an RD58, probably an RD58, uh, started our transfer burn, and now the RL10 aimed to complete it. Unfortunately, it did not manage to do that. Uh, it cut out before it could complete the burn and the probe itself did not have enough Delta V to make the completion. So it got boosted out into interplanetary orbit, but it did not manage to make it to its intended destination of Mercury. The 99th launch for the EDB space program was the Pearl Free Probe on the Prune 1i rocket from Tangra Aerospace by Mikko Gagozov. The launch script for this was produced by Nadav FR. And everything looked good through the first stage. The Prune 1i is a fairly straightforward rocket. And there we have the RD0110 lit on the upper stage, the fairing separation. This probe was meant to be a Venus lander. You can see it has a heat shield and a parachute and comms, of course. The heat shield worked, the parachute worked, well actually we didn't get to the parachute. The problem was we had part pressure limits on and we had no parts that could withstand the pressure of the Venusian atmosphere. Uh, so we had to turn part pressure limits off for subsequent Venus lander missions because we did want to conduct those missions. They did get conducted in real life and it was sort of unfair to not have any parts capable of conducting those missions. Unfortunately on this stream, this is the September 24th stream, uh, the audio was not recorded properly. Uh, currently launching is our 100th mission, and this was the Pearl 2 on the Prune 1i rocket. Uh, this is again from Tangra Aerospace with a launch script by Nadav FR. And this was actually a lunar mission. And uh, there we have the transfer stage, a very small uh, lunar mission meant to do some scanning and get some science. So here it is making orbit around the moon and it was successful in gathering science. Our next mission was our 101st launch and that was the Ruby 2 on the Prune 2i rocket. This is again Tangra Aerospace. Unfortunately we had a problem and perhaps it was controlling from the wrong core. 
The launch script was again the same launch script from Nadav FR, so it's probably not the launch script. It is most likely where it is controlling from or some Kerbal Joint Reinforcement issue. But uh, yes, this was supposed to be a Mars mission. I forget if it was supposed to be a Mars lander, it is possible. Uh, or else it was a Mars orbiter. But in any case, it is not going anywhere. It actually keeps going for a surprising amount of time before finally the payload pokes out and everything snaps. And finally, it was destroyed by range safety. Here we have another wigglish rocket. This is Launch 102, probing MiG Probe Phase 2 on the Prune 44 rocket. Uh, the probe is from Better Than Planes, designed by physics students. The rocket from Mikko Gagozov of Tangra Aerospace. And the launch script, Nadav FR's launch script. And, uh, well, it basically wiggles its way to high altitude. Um, it is a Mercury mission. So this was supposed to be Mercury flyby, and it just kept going. Uh, what can we say? But ultimately, aerodynamics, especially as we passed the speed of sound and approached max Q, let it rip apart, and there was no saving it after that, of course. And so it ended in failure. It still got a surprising distance up before it finally succumbed to a final disaster. But here we go. Uh, finally being able to reach range safety, and it is demolished. Our final mission on September 24th, uh, so far not going so good on our launch record. This is the Moon Mapper on Peter the Rocket. This is both the payload and the rocket designed by physics student of Better Than Planes, and the launch script is the EDB's own launch script this time. This was meant to be a lunar mapper, as the probe's name Moon Mapper indicates, the launch goes fine at the beginning. Interesting feature of Peter the Rocket is that it separates off two panels as the first stage is at the end of its burn in order to ignite verniers, uh, which then help to push the second stage and operate as Ullage rockets as the first stage finally uh, separates off and the second stage ignites. So that's a unique feature, and here the second stage is done and the probe's own engine completes orbit, and that was intentional. The probe was beyond the lifting capacity of Peter Rocket, which is about 4.5 tons. And here it is making its transfer to the moon. And you can see the uh, altitude radar that will be scanning the moon. And here we are getting into orbit around the moon successfully. So this mission was a success. Uh, two for four on September 24th. The final live stream we'll be covering in this video is the October 1st live stream. There will be a part two of this launch fest. And this is launch 104, the Ruby 2 on the Prune 2i rocket. And this is another Mars mission from Tangra Aerospace designed by Mikko Gagozov. So both the probe and the launcher for Mikko and the EDB's own launch script. And we lost one engine there, but it was close to the end of the burn anyway. And the first stage separates. And the second stage is good. And the second stage does successfully get us to orbit. It is not meant to be used for a transfer at all. Ultimately, a transfer stage is lit. It is actually two Rutherford vacuum engines, I believe, which is interesting. Kerosene and oxygen engines. And they complete their work, and that mission is on its way to Mars. The next mission was the Ruby 3. And this is launched on the Prune 1i with two boosters. So the Prune 1i-2, also from Tangra Aerospace, uh, designed by Mikko Gagazov. This time, the launch script was from Nadav FR. Boosters separated successfully, having finished their job. And the first stage also was uh, quite successful. Uh, there we have fairing separation before the first stage is complete. We're waiting for Miko here on the first stage. Just a single engine on the Prune 1i. And there we go. The first stage is out, the second stage is lit, and proceeding on to orbit. So now we can see the probe a little bit better here. It looks 
It looks like the Venus Lander, actually. And I wonder if I have it wrong in my notes, because it does have a heat shield as well as a parachute. But of course, you may need a heat shield and parachute for a Mars landing as well. So it is possible it is currently being transferred to Mars. Uh, for Tangra Aerospace, generally, the Ruby missions are the Mars missions. That is how the nomenclature works. But in any case, it managed to make its transfer, and that left us with our final mission on October 1st. A launch 106 was the Lieber 3. And the launcher name is Lieber, and the mission name is Lieber 3. And that is because it is attempting to fulfill the triple flyby mission, uh, the Mars, Venus, Moon flybys, all in a single mission. And the probe was designed by Shustrad Industries, the launcher from Satellites Are Us, that's Satellite 999, and the launch script from the EDB. So here we have the second stage lit. This is obviously a heavier launcher. And the probe itself optimized for Delta V because it has to do the triple flyby. Not really carrying that many scientific instruments, but mainly trying to fulfill the contract and make sure we get those funds. And so there we have it. We are in orbit and then proceeding with the transfer. Uh, the transfer would be first to Mars, then to Venus, and then finally back to Earth SOI for the Moon. This isn't a special convenient transfer window for this, this is a transfer window to Mars, but not somehow a slingshot around Mars straight to Venus or anything like that. It will have to wait in solar orbit to get the timing right to make the transfer to Venus and then back to Earth. But anyway, this was the final mission that we will be covering in this launch fest video. Uh, 19 missions in total were launched in this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.